Hey guys, make sure you stick around at the end of this video because I have a really, really amazing announcement. So awesome. This video is brought to you by all my Patreon supporters. Go Team Awesome! It's Oz. And today I'm going to be telling you why I came back to Japan. So this is actually a continuation of why I first came to Japan and why I left. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. There's going to be a card over here. Uh, that video talks about why I first decided to come to Japan when I was living in Canada and why ultimately I went back. So in this video I want to talk about two things. First I want to talk about after going back to Canada what it was like and what made me come back to Japan. And I also want to explain how I got to Japan the second time around. So let's just get into the story. So originally I'm from Toronto, Canada, but I decided to actually move back to Canada, but to Vancouver. And there's two reasons uh, why I decided that city. The first reason is that there's a lot of Japanese people uh, in Vancouver compared to Toronto. So for my, my wife at the time, Miho, it would have been a good way to come to Canada, but still have some connection to Japan and possibly um, some Japanese people that would be able to help her find a job. The second reason was um, I don't want to get into too much of the personal situation but so that was uh, one of the other reasons why we moved to Vancouver. It might have worked out well for us there unfortunately um, we applied for uh, permanent residence for Miho so she could be a Canadian citizen and get a job otherwise she can't work in Canada. So we went when we first left we went just the two of us and only I had, well I was Canadian so I could work but she couldn't work legally so basically she was like a housewife and if anyone knows about Vancouver you also know it's the the most expensive city so uh, when we went there um, I had a little bit of savings that we took with us but um, I didn't have a job so uh, it was pretty high rent and we were actually living in a basement apartment. I wouldn't say it was bad, it was actually in a decent area but I started looking for work but I just for the first couple of months I couldn't really find anything. Um, I tried to apply for jobs in my field like public relations or whatever but I just couldn't find anything. I went to a couple of interviews but also I didn't get them. So I was getting kind of disappointed but more than that I was getting scared because I was the sole breadwinner and so I was kind of like trying to figure out how to make money. So I quickly just finally found one job, the only job that would hire me was a Bell Mobility uh, for like a customer service like on the phone, customer service for cellular phones. I'm not gonna lie, like I don't like phone work and I've done it before, but it wasn't at least sales, it was more like customer service, it wasn't as bad. It helped me pay bills, um, the salary was decent, um, the only thing is I didn't feel like I came back to Canada to do something that anyone really could do because uh, literally you only had to have a high school diploma to get that job so it wasn't really in my field at all of public relations and one of the reasons why I had come to back to Canada was trying to get into my field so I was kind of disappointed in that but I had no choice I needed the money so I thought I would just work there until I could hopefully get a better job and hopefully until Miho's working thing would come in a lot of the pressure would be off me Unfortunately, um, the, not only did the permanent resident thing take a long time, our actual permanent residence forms got sent to our old apartment in Japan and it got re-delivered re to Yo Miho's mom's address but she didn't know what it was so she didn't open it and basically we kind of got screwed because we couldn't get the forms and we didn't know we already got them but they were just sitting there and we didn't know that. We were pretty much almost out of money. So me and, me and Miho finally decided, okay, we need to get out of Vancouver and maybe we should go to Toronto. Um, because I have friends and family there and rent is cheaper there at the time. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to find, I'll be able to send some, find some work. And uh, Miho's visa would come in and she'd be able to find work as well. So that's why we decided after eight months and after a lot of money lost, we decided to head back to Toronto. So the good thing was once we moved from Vancouver to Toronto, um, I thought it would be hard to find a job and hard to find an apartment, but I got lucky because um, in terms of apartment, I was able to find a really decent, nice apartment, um, not so expensive, and ready to move in within like a week or so. So after we got to Toronto within a week, I was already in my new apartment and we used the rest of my, our savings we had to like furnish the apartment and pay for us and last month's rent. Also, as soon as I got to Toronto, one of my uh, friends from my college, her name's April, she used to work at like a recruiting company, a human resources company. Someone she was 
supposed to hire for um, for this job at CDTV um, kind of backed out last minute and she needed to fill it so she asked me if I wanted the job and I was like yeah that's amazing and because CDTV is a TV station I thought cool this is much more related to public relations so I, I took the job and the salary was really good um, the pay was really good and the location was downtown Toronto so it was a nice area so everything was kind of finally working out um, things were starting to look up and that's also the time we decided to get a pet I really wanted a dog and Miho also wanted a dog and I always wanted I always dreamed of having a Jack Russell so we were able to find um, a dog and that's where we that's where we got Maple um, so yeah that was probably one of the best things to happen to me by moving to Toronto the job itself uh, was working at CDTV. Um, I had no idea what the job was going to be. All I knew is the title was Traffic Coordinator. So I assumed it had something to do with like CDTV, like live traffic news or something. But it had nothing to do with cars or traffic at all. Um, it was like schedule placement and I guess traffic meant the, the flow of commercials within the show, within the schedule of the day. Once again, it wasn't really in my field. Um, it wasn't anything creative. It was pretty much a data entry, uh, a, a data entry, fancy data entry job. Um, but the salary was so good that I didn't want to um, not take it. And I also was keeping my eyes open for some kind of public relations job that would come up. So uh, I started doing that job and uh, things started looking good because even Miho was able to get a job. She was uh, working at American Express but in like the Japanese department. Um, so it was perfect. We, we both had jobs, we were making money, we had a dog now, we had a nice apartment. So things in Toronto were pretty sweet. I guess one of the things that started getting me thinking about Japan again was just um, small things that I missed about Japan because I had lived in Japan I think three or four years which is not that long but I, I kind of like was used to stuff like um, convenience stores and just Japanese food all the time, Japanese restaurants everywhere and the way people act and the, the, the way society is is very different um, I found in Toronto so I guess it was a, like a reverse culture shock coming back to Canada maybe when I was in Toronto the first time I didn't think it was rude but then now I could notice the difference so I kind of had like different expectations of what Toronto should be like and I was also much more polite than I was when I probably first lived here just because that's the way you are in, J in Japan so when I got back I kind of felt like I was too polite and like everyone was kind of walking all over me and like especially at work and stuff like everyone was like really pushy and direct and I don't know I just felt like the workplace was much more different than I was used to in Toronto uh, in Japan so I kind of found it hard to like relate to people and then I realized like one thing that I kept doing is I was always like still thinking about Japan all the time when I think about what should I want what do I want to eat for dinner for example I would always think oh maybe I should go to that sushi restaurant down the street or maybe I can find like a tempura or an izakaya or something and like I was always thinking about Japanese food or Japanese places and like on the weekends sometimes I would go to the J town which is like Japan town in Toronto but it's really far from downtown so I'd take buses like for an hour to get to this place just so I could buy like Japanese Pocky and like green tea or something like that so I was feeling really like homesick reverse homesick I guess of Japan I wanted to eat the, the, the snacks I was used to I wanted to eat the rest I loved Kokuichiban curry but I couldn't find that anywhere everything that I really liked about Japan I was kind of missing it like same feeling I guess I had when I was in Japan and I was missing like Cool Ranch Doritos or Reese's Peanut Butter Cups or whatever. I was feeling like that but about Japanese things. Like I, I don't know if I mentioned but when I was in Japan the first time around I didn't speak any Japanese just because I had so many foreign friends and I didn't really try hard. But I felt like my Japanese improved while I was in Toronto. The good thing about my job at the, where I used to work at City TV is like there was no uniform, you didn't have to wear like a tie or suit or anything, so I would come in hoodies and jeans and you could have headphones on 20, like the whole time, the whole 8 hours you were there with music playing or whatever 
and um, on my computer as long as I'm like entering stuff for the schedule and stuff I didn't really have to talk to anybody so I was kind of in my own Japanese bubble at work I had my headphones on and I was always streaming like either Japanese music or Japanese movies or Japanese drama which is actually how I first came across my first YouTube video of Japan when I was living in Japan the first time around there was YouTube but uh, I just never thought about it as actual YouTube it was more like a, just a place to go to watch episodes of, of Simpsons or watch music videos or something. I mean, I knew you could make videos, but I didn't think people actually did. So I never came across any like private vlogs or videos while I was in Japan. But once I got back to Toronto and I was working and I was on my computer, I was on YouTube like pretty much eight hours a day. So I just stumbled upon uh, a girl, I still remember her, her name is Emily. I think her like channel was really famous. It was called Apple Milk 1988. So she was the first YouTuber I ever watched that's not like a just a TV show or like a, a pirated music video or whatever. She was in America making videos about Japan and then she moved to Japan. So I got to see her transition from living in I think the States, making videos about Japan, Japanese language, and then moving to uh, America, to Japan and actually living in Japan. I wish I had done that. I didn't even know that existed. And I wish I had been like making videos myself while I was in Japan. I was like, wow, such a waste of time. I could have done that because I had so much free time in uh, Japan when I used to live there. So I was kind of like obsessed with YouTubers then because through her I found other people that she was connected to like Kentanaka and uh, Tokyo Kuni and Radri and TKYO Sam and uh, of course Gimme a Break Man and Hiko Simon and all these old school YouTubers were all connected together and I was watching them in Nagoya in Tokyo and I was like oh my god I was exactly at those places I was always doing those things I think I, I, I think I watched all their channels and all their videos like every day for like the entire time I was working at the city TV and then I started thinking about my life and I was like Okay, I'm in Toronto. I'm back in Toronto. Um, I don't have any skills because I didn't really do anything after university except I went to teach English. And so I came back with like not so many skills and even the degree I had and stuff, it had been like five years since I had like got my degree. So it was kind of, and I had no experience in that field. And I'm not really doing anything of interest in Toronto. I'm not enjoying the job. It's just like a data entry job. And I'm not really enjoying the culture around here because I'm still watching Japanese dramas and watching Japanese music videos and watching YouTubers, foreigners in Japan making YouTube videos. And I feel like my whole life is centered around Japan but I'm in Toronto. So I started feeling like what am I doing here? And then on top of that I looked around and I was looking at my friends and family and at the time um, most of my friends were married with kids and they were purchasing their first house or their first condo or they were moving up to like head supervisor or head manager or creating their own businesses or whatever. Wow, I got nothing like that here and I don't know if I ever will. And she was kind of working at this job where it's really shift work and it's really hard so she didn't have like steady days off and sometimes she has to work at night, sometimes she has to work in the morning and so it was a really tough life. I mean, we were doing well in terms of money and uh, we had maple, so that was great. But in terms of enjoying our life, I don't think either of us were enjoying it. So in the end, I started thinking, what should I do? Should I stick it out? Should I wait in Toronto and see if I can get a better job? Or should I think about going back to Japan? And all of these thoughts started going through my head. So then I started thinking about it and I was like, you know what? One thing I didn't get to do in Japan when I was in Japan the first time around in terms of English teaching was I worked at like Eikaiwas and I did like kindergartens and stuff, but I'd never been an ALT, an assistant language teacher. And ALTs are assistant language teachers and they work in actual public schools. Um, so they work in the elementary or junior high school or high school. I never worked for an actual board of education or actual um, like a public school. So that's one thing that I thought, hey, maybe I should try. And the most elite company at the time was Jet Program. I guess it still is. And the thing about Jet Program is it's an actual ex like Japanese English teaching program, and they hire um, native teachers to come and assist in the in the schools with 
with the, the Japanese English teacher. So it's really hard to get in. Um, most people say it's you apply, it's a huge application process, takes like I believe like six to nine months for the whole process to go through and uh, a lot of people either don't get it or they get on the waiting list. So my goal was kind of like if I can get this jet job because the salary is pretty good and it's kind of like a, a good reputation and it's like the elite. So if I get this job then I will go to Japan. And for the jet program um, I filled out all the applications I needed, I got all the forms I needed. I had to write an essay and um, so I did that and um, there was like scheduled interviews. I went to the interview, I, I had practiced Japanese ahead of time because I knew there's like a Japanese portion of the interview. I remember having the interview arranged, I remember going to downtown Toronto, uh, wearing a suit, going to the interview. I remember there was about three people. Um, one of them spoke English, the other two were Japanese people who didn't. And I thought it went pretty well. Um, I wasn't sure if I'd get it or not, but I thought that I did the best I could. I thought if they don't give it to me, it's probably because I've already been to Japan and worked in Japan, so they want to maybe give it to somebody younger who has never had the chance to go to Japan and maybe they're like fresh out of university, so maybe something like that. Um, also, they knew I had a Japanese wife. So I thought, oh, maybe they don't want to deal with the whole what would you do with couples or like going back to Japan with other people. And like, if I got the job, I would take it and I would go to Japan. If I didn't, then I would just continue in Toronto. The answer is uh, no and yes. Um, so let me explain. I think I got a letter in the mail and I got the letter like... Uh, I don't know when it was, I'm gonna say February, maybe, I can't remember. But the message was, thank you for applying for this position. Unfortunately, um, um, you did not make the, the first cut or whatever it is, whatever it was of the job, but you are on the waiting list. So if one of the people who have accepted don't... Hey, hello. Alright, go ahead, take your time. You comfortable? Can I continue? Good? Somebody turns it down, the jet program position down, then uh, they'll go down the list of all the people on the waiting list and I could get bumped up. Um, that usually means you don't get it because most people who went through all that trouble to apply and put the resume in and get the interview done and like go through all the as resume writing and all the documents needed and the process it takes, most people are not gonna say no once they get hired. So I kind of had given up. I was like, okay, I didn't get the jet. I guess it's destiny. I guess it means uh, I was meant to just stay in Canada and um, continue my life the way it is. Really, really bad news, but good news for me, I guess, kind of, was the big earthquake in Japan hit. The one with the tsunami and the, the Fukushima radiation problems and all that stuff, the, the big earthquake. It happened on March 11th and uh, I think it's a couple of weeks before that I had got or maybe the week before that I had got the, the, the letter that had the waiting listing and literally I think the day after or two days after the earthquake um, I got a phone call from Jet and they're like hey I actually got bumped up so I was kind of scared that they were gonna say oh um, we want you to go to Fukushima because I think nobody would want to go to Fukushima after the earthquake, especially like to teach in the small towns that usually jets are placed in. It sounds dangerous and scary. But they didn't say Fukushima, they said Hokkaido. They're like, um, we'd like you to teach in Hokkaido um, in a small town. So I accepted the position in uh, Hokkaido. But this time I would come back as a junior high school and elementary school assistant language teacher in a very different part of Japan in Hokkaido. So I thought it would be going back to Japan but still a new fresh place that I'd never been to and a new start. So there you go, that's why I came back to Japan. It was a little bit of the obsession with Japan on top of watching YouTubers and wanting to be a YouTuber in Japan. Um, having the opportunity to work for jet program, which is kind of like a rare rare chance So in my next video, I'm going to be telling you about um, What the jet the jet program was like and why I left jet and uh, I've made a video called why I left Eon um, So if you haven't seen that you can check that one out, but my why I left jet will also be a very interesting uh, video 
and uh, I think you will enjoy that one as well. Um, if you enjoy this video, please thumbs up, please share. Before you guys go, my final, final news, my special announcement is I got a new job and I got a new apartment. And I will be moving at the end of the month and I will be starting my job in the beginning of April. So I will tell you more about both of those things um, coming soon in my next video. Um, there will be an apartment tour, there will also be a new video about um, the leaving my current company and uh, what kind of job I'll be doing next. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be super exciting. There's many, many ways to support me. You can go to Patreon and pledge even $1 a month and you get a free video, extra video per week if you pledge a dollar. If you pledge $3, you can get a lot more stuff. You can get like more exclusive videos. You can get like my monthly journal. If you pledge even more money, you can get free stuff from Japan, a free extra song of the month video. Um, also, uh, I have a book I wrote called Swipe Right for Love. Um, it's available in ebook format, and Amazon has both ebook and paperback. So, if you're interested, please check that out. The link will be in the section down there below. Also, I have this t shirt, uh, the Aussie Awesome t shirt, in a variety of colors and sizes. If you want that, that's also in the information section below. That would also support me. And also, I have a PayPal. Um, account and on my channel if you click on the little little round thing on my banner that'll take you to my PayPal if you want to support me that way and all of that money will go towards pay for anything YouTube related whether it be train costs or entrance fees or equipment costs or anything like that so all of that combined will hopefully help me get into my next phase of my life in Japan and it'll be thanks to you so if you guys watch this far Please type in the comment section, Go Team Oz. Don't forget to subscribe because my videos are awesome. Ozzy awesome. Take care and see you next time.